<laughs> All right, um, let's see. Richard Armstrong, Richard Barrett, Mackenzie Bates, Kyle, All right. Brent. Starting to worry I was in the wrong classroom here. Christopher. Um, Sharon. Thomas. Ian. Carmen. Alora. Cody. Sean. Susan, Willie, Colleen, Dante, Joanna, Hope, Stacy, Sandra, Brian, Anthony. Uh, Roger, Corey, Christopher, Jason, Craig, Michael, Michelle, Hallie, Joshua, Nicole, Mark, Brian, Mary, Joshua, Adam, Richard, Christine, Florence, Melanie, Michelle, Zachary, and Michael. All right. Anyone whose name I didn't call? All right. Um, you can check with me uh, after class to make sure. Did you uh, register recently? or? Okay. CISS 216? Okay. Okay. Uh, it could be that you're, you're what, what class uh, do you? English 161, uh, Let me check real quick. You might want to check out here to see if there's a class, uh, class remove notification. Okay, 105 is a section, BU 207 is the room. Seriously? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> That's okay. All right. How many of you are familiar with, or let me, let me reverse the question. How many of you are not familiar with using ANGEL, the course management system? Okay. What I will do is I'll, I'll give a brief introduction to, to ANGEL, and those of you that have more questions, um, we can discuss it in lab. ANGEL is our course management system. It is where um, all the stuff for the course will be posted. In other words, I'm not going to have any handouts for you today or any other day for that matter. Everything instead will be posted to ANGEL, and that way you can review it online. If you want to print out, you can print a copy your, yourself. But um, again, um, everything will be posted here. I will also use ANGEL to communicate with you. So for example, if you turn in an assignment and there is an issue with it, whatever the issue might be, you'll get an email through Angel that will say, you know, please review such and such with me. All right? You can access Angel. Let me go back to the beginning. You can access Angel by going to angel.lorainccc.edu. So angel.lorainccc.edu.
All right. Um, when you get there, you'll be asked to log in. And it, there's login instructions over here. Uh, typically, it will, your ID will be your, your LC student ID. Your password will then be a number of different possibilities, your student number or the last four digits of your social security number, etc. When you log in, you'll see a list of all your classes. Again, your screen will look a little different than mine, given the fact that I'm the instructor in this class and I have different classes than you, but it'll look approximately like this. All right. Here is the class, CISS 216. Uh, if you click on it, you'll get into it. Um, any announcements I have uh, will be posted here. Um, and now it is good to check, you know, once or twice between classes. Uh, I'll post announcements, for example, if I knew that I was not feeling well and not going to make it to class one day. I'll post an announcement. I also will post announcements if someone has a question in class that I didn't give a satisfactory answer to. I'll do some research after class and, and come up with a better answer. And I'll often do that, you know, if there's some, something that I just can't figure in class or whatever reason, um, I'll oftentimes post it and, and post it as an announcement. Uh, to start out, most of the stuff that we're interested in is going to be on the content uh, tab within Angel. So we'll go there. All right. And if we click on that, all right, getting started, read things first. This is more of a message for the online students. I'm going to kind of cover this uh, uh, here. Uh, course information uh, contains uh, a few documents. We'll look at the syllabus. I'll point to communication methods and uh, copyright. Please read through these on your own because I'm only going to hit the highlights. I'm not going to really focus on these. Copyright information for educational projects relates to the fact that, given the fact that we're in an academic environment here, the copyright law is a little different than it would be in, in the general, general public for general usage. So, for example, you can use uh, images off of websites on your assignments, all right, provided you give credit and provided you don't take too much material from a, a copyrighted source. And this last document is simply the guidelines as far as this goes. Course organization describes the folders and where everything is, and I'm going to talk about that in a minute, so we really don't need to look at that. Communication methods shows all the ways that you can communicate with me. All right. You can email me, you can call me on the phone, you can stop in during office hours. The one thing that I do in this class is I make uh, every class's lab available to every one of my students. In other words, I have lab today. Um, from 10 to 11 in this class. I also have a uh, lab from, um, let's see, what is it? Um, 6.30 to 7.30 this evening. All right, on Tuesdays and Thursdays, I have lab from 11.30 or so to 1. And I also have lab from um, 9 in the evening until 10 p.m. All right, any of those other labs, you're welcome to come in on. And I make that offer to my campus and my online students. Any student that has difficulty, you can stop and see me at any lab. So if you're having any difficulty, talk to me about what other lab times you can come into. All right? I try to make as many opportunities for you to come in and get assistance as, as possible. And they include both day and evening hours. Um, and again, and then I have my regular office hours where I'm up in my office. The bottom line is, is if you are sincere about needing extra help and you are taking the effort to do that, then we'll figure something out, all right? Whether it be coming during my office hours or coming during another class's lab or whatever, all right? Um, 
please make sure to ask questions if there's something that you don't know. All right. Um, this goes both for the campus class and the online class. You know, I can't tell when people are confused. You know, uh, in an online class, I can't tell in a campus class sometimes unless people alert me to that and raise their hand and ask the questions. So, by all means. The communication methods page shows that there's a lot of different ways that you can contact me. Take advantage of one of them if you're running into difficulty. All right. Let's look at the syllabus. And again, I'm, I'm going to, uh, given the fact that we have a little bit of a late start today, I will kind of fast forward through this one and really hit the high points. All right, you can read through this on your own. We have two textbooks, a bigger book and a thinner book. The bigger book has HTML written on it. It is uh, the book that we'll probably spend most of our time in this class. There is a smaller, thinner book called The Elements of User Experience that uh, we look at and we use it sort of as a basis of our project. And there'll be a three or four week period where we work more out of that book. Or we'll actually work out of both books, I think, for, for a few weeks here. Please read through all this. Um, some general college policies. <clears throat> Late work. Um, I have a, uh, a little bit different policy about late work than, than many instructors do. Many instructors are very rigid about late work. I make an effort to be very flexible about late work. Um, don't use that as a crutch, though. Um, if you're completing the assignments consistently and on time, you're doing well in the course. You should have no problem getting a good grade. If you are not getting assignments done in time or struggling to, and there's no external reason like, gee, I got this assignment late because, you know, I got hit with the nasty flu and I wasn't able to do anything for, for three days. All right. If you're just consistently not getting the assignments in on time, then, then we need to take it to the next step and you need to talk to me um, and get additional assistance. All right. So use a deadline sort of as a gauge. If you're hitting those deadlines, then you're probably in good shape, you know. If you're not hitting those deadlines or you're not getting the work done in time and not getting it done correctly, then, then really you need to step it up and, and we need to figure something out. So I will deduct the late points, but I will deduct less if I am in communication with you. I may not deduct at all. So for example, if you're here, I see you in lab, you're asking questions, I see that progress is being made, you turn something in a little bit late, I'm okay with that. Hey, you got it. It may took you a little longer, but you got it. Whereas if you simply, I do not hear from you, and then all of a sudden, halfway through the semester, I get your first assignment, I'm likely to take off points in that case. Here's how your grade's going to be divided. You will have a, uh, a total of 60 points versus, uh, on homework. Uh, the homework assignments are not necessarily one per week. Some of the assignments go for a couple weeks. So you'll probably have 8 to 10, 11 around there. So you won't necessarily have one per week. But for the first few small assignments, you will. You then have a project, which is done in two portions, um, a design, and finally the completed project. And that should add up to 100 points. If the homework isn't exactly 60 points, like sometimes it's like 58 points or 64 points, then I prorate it to be equal to 60 points. And then your grade uh, is based on 90, 80, 70. Here's a schedule that we follow that's the subject to change. You know, if, if a topic uh, requires us going a little bit longer, I'll go a little bit longer on it. Or if we get through something quickly, um, you know, then, then we'll start on the next topic. But this gives you a good idea where to be uh, in your reading uh, in, in the two textbooks. Here's a discussion forum on one of the ways that you can communicate with me. Here's information about the semester project, which we will 
um, spend a fair amount of time on in uh, an upcoming class, so I won't talk about it now other than to point you to it and tell you it's a good idea to try to read through it um, prior to, to that, so read through that as soon as possible. And then week one is where your first homework assignment is, and we'll come back to that at the, at the very end of class, to what your first homework assignment is. All right? So that's kind of a fast-forwarded version of, of my typical um, first day of class lecture. Um, those of you that do not know Angel, be sure to um, you know, get my attention in lab and, and make sure that you can log on and make sure that you can um, navigate through and find the things that you need to do. Um, over the next few days, be sure to read these documents in more detail because, again, I just sort of point them out, gave you an overview. Um, I'm comfortable that you can read those as well as I can read them to you. All right. Any questions at this point? Yes? Uh, just a general question. Are most of your assignments going to be the same? Um, not necessarily. Um, it, it depends. It, you know, I, I look at the size of the assignment and I judge how long it will be. Um, probably the shortest period of time that you'll have an assignment will be a week. In other words, I may, may be assigned, you know, it may be assigned like on a Monday and do the next Monday. All right. Uh, longer assignments might to be two weeks. Um, the first assignment I try not to make too quickly just because I know that there's people um, shuffling their schedule the last, you know, the, you know, immediately before it or there might be issues the first day or whatever. So I try to make that a little bit longer than that. So yeah, anywhere from a week to two weeks the assignments will be due. Questions? I think no, never mind. I, was say, I think that one was because of Labor Day, but no, that's not because of Labor Day. Labor Day's not, not next week. Other questions? Let's get on to uh, the content of, of this class, and let's talk about making web pages. Um, your one book is titled, I don't know what it's titled, Head first <laughs> HTML with CSS and XHTML. Let's look at the word HTML in detail. All right, let's, let's examine it and let's break it apart. Um, really, um, people that work with computers love initials. Everything has some initials for it. You know, that, that's half the job sometimes, I think, is keeping, keeping straight all these different initials. HTML, all right language that we use to create web pages. All right? What does HTML stand for? Anyone have an idea? Go ahead. Very good. Hypertext markup language. Let's look at this a piece at a time. First of all, hypertext. We all have an idea what text is, right? Text is, is words, characters, letters, numbers, that sort of thing. All right? You know, you could say, you know, we have a textbook. There's a book that has text in it. Let's look at a book. All right, here's a book that has text in it. All right? Now, what a lot of people do um, in, in, does anyone have a used copy of the textbook? Can I look at it? Let's see if you have a highlighting, if, if, you're, if, if the previous owner highlighted the books or not. Wow, this is supposed to be used, but this looks brand new. All right. uh, does anyone have a book that's been, that's been highlighted in? If you want to flip through for a second. Well, some people, I'm sure you've seen them, Highlight their textbooks, all right? In other words, if, if I'm talking about something and I say, gee, on page 45, that last paragraph is really important. That's going to be on the exam. Gee, what will people do? People will go and they'll highlight it, or they'll, they'll put a star next to it, or they'll put a star and an exclamation point. They'll somehow mark up the text, all right? And 
with textbooks and, and note taking, the markup takes a very physical form of actually marking up with a highlighter or a marker or a pen or whatever um, the text. And what are they really doing? They're giving additional information about that particular paragraph. In other words, that paragraph isn't just an ordinary paragraph of text in the book. It's not equal to every other paragraph. It's a very important paragraph. So they put a markup on the page to indicate, hey, this paragraph is a very important paragraph. All right? And they do that with a marker. Um, some students use different color markers for different things. Uh, my daughter is notorious for that. She marks up her text, you know, if she's running out of her orange marker, there's a panic because she can't mark it in yellow because yellow means something else. All right? So therefore, all right, the different markups mean different things. For example, all right, if I were to say the paragraph on, the pay on page 179 is obsolete and therefore ignore it, you're going to mark it up a different way, right? You're not going to highlight it and put a star and say, be sure I understand that. You might put a big X through it or otherwise mark it up to indicate that, hey, this is different than other paragraphs in that it's less important than the stuff, you know, the rest of the stuff on the page, all right? So that is what markup language is, where we take text, we take our text, and we somehow mark it up to give it more meaning than usual. All right, to give it more meaning. Anyone that's a sci-fi fan, hyperspace is like beyond space. It's more than regular space. If I say that someone is hyperactive, it means that they're more active than you, the normal, than usual. So hyper means more than. So if we look at all this together, we take regular text and we soup it up a little bit. We make it more than regular text by marking it up and giving additional meaning to the text. So, for example, if we look at this page in Angel, all right, to do this week, all right, that's not just ordinary text, that's a link, all right, so that if I click on it, I'm taken to another page. It's not just plain old text, it's hypertext, it's more than regular text, it's text that forms a link, so that when I click on it, I go to another page. Likewise, week one. Week one isn't just ordinary text, it's like a headline or a header. All right, so it's a little bit bigger than everything else. So we do a similar thing in our web pages that we do when we take a book and annotate it. We mark it up. We give additional meaning to the text that's there. All right. Our audience isn't a person that's reading it. Our audience is a web browser. So the web browser knows how to display the page. All right. Now how do we mark up a textbook? We mark it up with, um, you know, highlighters and so on. How do we mark up our text on a web page? We do it using what are called tags. All right? And what I'd like to do is cover just a handful of tags, just so that you have a basic idea of, of what's to come and, and get sort of a sense of the principle at work here. And we'll definitely expand on this uh, in the next class and, and going forward. First of all, a web page really is just a plain text file. All right? It's not stored in a Word format or in a JPEG format or any of the formats that are used to store more complicated things. It's just plain text. All the formatting for HTML is done through the use of tags. There's a lot of ways you can create a web page, but we want to make sure we understand web pages um, sort of on a nuts and bolts level. So we're going to use a plain text editor. And in the Windows environment, the simplest plain text editor is Notepad. So I have Notepad open, and I'm going to start typing in um, a web page. All right. 
I'm going to build this example by adding a few tags right off the bat and the page isn't going to be complete at first. All right? I'm going to leave a few things out and we'll go back and we'll fill those things in later. But I want to get started showing some very basic tags. All right? Let's say I want to do a web page about myself. All right? I might include information, you know, a, a heading that says, hey, this is a page about me. I might include a subheading then about uh, my education. I might include a subheading about my work. I might include a subheading about my hobbies. All right? So, the basic text might look like this. Mike Zeller's homepage. Education. Um, what I say, work experience, hobbies. That's the text that I want to display. But I haven't marked up that text yet. I need to tell the web browser, a web browser is a program used to display web pages. I need to, to tell the web browser how to display those things what these things mean. And the first tags that we're going to look at are the tags for headings. All right. The top main heading is included in an H1 tag. And an H1 tag looks like this. All right. All tags come in pairs. Keep in mind I'm making general statements here. There are some exceptions, but the way we're going to do it, all tags come in pairs. There's a starting tag and an ending tag. What's the difference between the starting tag and the ending tag? The ending tag has a little slash here. So, this is the start of the H1 tag, and the H1 tag extends from there to there. Everything inside of it is included within the H1 tag. Well, what does that mean? All right, The H1 tag means that it's a, a first level or top level heading. So think of it as being sort of like a main topic on the page. So if this page is Mike Zeller's homepage, that's sort of the, the main topic, right? And therefore, it's included in an H1 tag indicating, hey, this is a, uh, this is a, uh, a top level tag. You do have, one thing I didn't mention, you do have a, uh, you do have a little microphone on your screen. So uh, you in the North Ridgeville shirt, yeah, you must have inadvertently hit the little thing because what that does is that puts the camera on you. All right. That way, if you ask, that's okay. That way, if you ask questions, uh, the microphone can pick you up. All right. If you don't, if you're shy or in the witness protection program, don't worry about it. You don't have to press the button. What I will try to do is repeat your. Remember to repeat your questions so that the folks at home uh, can hear it. At any rate, Mike Zeller's homepage is included in an H1 tag. That means it's a top level heading. All right. Now I said education, work experience, and hobbies were sort of second level headings. They're sort of subheadings. Those are going to be included in an H in H2 tags. This is the equivalent, if I had this text on a sheet of paper of marking it up and saying this is the main idea, this is a second, or this is a, a, a subheader, this is a subheader, this is a subheader, marking it up with notes on it, putting it in the tags. Again, notice every tag comes in pairs, so for every tag there's a start tag and an ending tag. And those tags go around the text that you want to 
treat or identify a certain way. All right? And in this case, again, we have our H1 tag, our H2 tags, and so on. Don't think that the first heading is an H1 and the second is an H2 and the third is an H3. Think of it in terms of levels. Your top level heading is an H1. Your second level is an H2. If I had something underneath education, like college, high school, primary school, those would be H3 tags. So think in terms of levels, not the sequence. The last tag that we'll look at is a paragraph, or, or the next tag that we'll look at is a paragraph tag. And a paragraph tag simply means we have a paragraph of text, just like you would use the word uh, in English. So I've gone in the notepad and I have created the start of an HTML document. I'm still missing a few things. All right. But I've created the start of an HTML document. Let's go and save it and view it in the browser. In this class, as we're developing web pages, we're going to view the web pages two different ways. We're going to view them in Notepad as we are editing those pages, as we're going and adding and making changes and adding stuff and changing stuff and so on. We're going to be using Notepad for that. We're going to be viewing our end result of our web page in web browsers, for example, Internet Explorer or Firefox. So. In order to do that, when I go and save this, I need to go and save it. I don't want to save it as a text file, a .txt file. I want to instead save it as an HTML file. So I'll save it as a file name called first.html. And if I click Save, I can now see it on the desktop over here. Now this file is the same file that I'm editing in Notepad. It's not like there's two different files. I'm just going to look at it two different ways. So I'll open it in Notepad, sort of to do the nuts and bolts, change the code, edit the code, add code. I will view it in the browser by double clicking on it. I know I saved it right if I see in, you know if I see the icon for a web browser, for example, Internet Explorer. So I'll double click this and I will view that in the web browser. Now notice that when I view it in the web browser, Mike Zeller's homepage is the largest text on the page. Why is that? Yeah, because it's in an H1 tag. The H1 tag tells the browser, hey, this is a top-level heading. So by default, the browser makes a top-level heading the biggest thing on the page. Makes sense. It's the main idea of the page. All right? Notice that the three subheaders are a little bit smaller than the main header. Why? Well, because they're a subheader. All right? It makes sense that... The, you know, the top heading is the biggest. The second level heading is the, the next biggest. If I did an H3, H4, H5, H6, they'd progressively be getting smaller. You have from H1 through H6. Again, you have six levels of headings, which should be more than enough. If you have more than six levels of uh, ideas on your page, you probably have too big of a page, and you probably should break it down into a couple smaller pages. Notice that this text is just sort of a regular size because that's just a regular paragraph of text. All right. Now we don't really have a completed web page yet. We have the start of a completed web page. There's other tags that 
that uh, we need to add to sort of finish this up. And you can see those in the book. And in addition, we will talk about those on Wednesday. What I'd like to do, though, is I'd like to take a second to look at what your first assignment is. Because even if you're having trouble with this, if this is a little shaky, um, you can start on your first assignment. You can start doing the research for your first assignment. I will, by the way, make this code available in ANGEL for you to take a look at and play with if you wish. For your first assignment, I want you to find web pages about these four topics. And the main topics for this are HTML, XHTML, CSS, web design, and accessibility. I want you to find four websites about each of these topics. That shouldn't be very hard at all. All right. That's a total of 16 websites to find. How do you find these websites? You just go to Google and type in those things as search terms. Pretty straightforward. Do you know what these things mean? Maybe, maybe not. It really doesn't matter at this point. What we're doing is we're finding resources. What I want you to do when you find these resources is to spend a little bit of time reading about them. Read about those resources. Uh, this, was, this is one way of giving a nice little overview of the class. So read about what those resources say about the particular technologies involved. And then you'll create a web page that will summarize those sites and give a little bit of an overview of those topics and include links to each of those four sites that you found for a topic. So, for example, your page will probably have four sections. All right? An HTML, a CSS, website design, and accessibility. Underneath those sections, all right, you'll have a paragraph explaining what those technologies mean, sort of summarizing what you found on those pages, and you'll also provide links to those four pages. Now, we haven't talked about how to do links yet, but we have talked about how to do top level headings, second level headings, and paragraphs. So you can actually do a fair portion of this assignment simply by looking at my example and maybe extending it a bit. And then next time we'll be sure to talk about links so that you can wrap up this assignment. But for now you could at the very least do the research and start reading about these topics um, so you can have the content. Any questions at this point? We can, again, we can discuss this a little bit more in lab. Uh, those of you who have not worked with Angel, be sure you touch base with me so that you can find the stuff. Again, I apologize for being late. Um, you know, we'll try to take into account the traffic a little more next time, and we'll see you up in lab. <laughs>